I really would like to know what it smelled like in that auditorium as well. So essential oils placed on every single chair, 250 of them, plus the commissioner's seats, plus the conference room. This employee maybe had good intentions trying to get rid of the bad air in the room because, as you might know, finding a replacement for Albrecht's Patterson has been a contentious issue. It has been two days of cleanup trying to get rid of oil on all 249 chairs in the auditorium, 34 leather chairs the commissioners use, plus an additional 19 chairs in the conference room. An employee used essential oils to try to move the bad energy out of the building. While her intent was not to cause harm, it's just the latest in the bizarre battle to succeed Al Brooks Patterson. It started last week at Patterson's public viewing when Treasurer Andy Meisner went public with complaints about the Board of Commissioners and how its chair, fellow Democrat Dave Woodward, had the votes to be appointed executive and fulfill Patterson's term. Woodward even resigned his commission seat in order to interview and get the appointment. But now, Woodward has removed himself from contention and intends to resume his place on the board even though he resigned, which may or may not be legal. Expect the Oakland County Republican Party to file a lawsuit today. If Woodward is able to take his place on the board, Democrats will have a one-vote majority and could theoretically be able to appoint a successor. Now, this board meeting is scheduled for 9.30 this morning. We are going to have a camera crew there to let you know exactly is what's happening. But also, Everard and Rhonda, I don't know a whole lot about essential oils, but I think there's like a different scent. So what do you think? Was it filled with lavender, maybe uh, mint? Lavender is very what popular. Mm -hmm. So shady. No <laughs> <word>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick. Thank you. Shade. <laughs> 6.35 is your time. And turning our attention now to Michigan State University and the football athletic trainer that is now facing sexual assault charges. 39-year-old David Yager is accused of assaulting his girlfriend at Spartan Stadium and lying about it back in 2015. Yager is still employed by the university University, but has since been placed on leave since March of 2018. Yager is also one of the 11 people named by the Attorney General's office as having failed to report their knowledge of Larry Nassar's abuse before it became public. If convicted, he does face up to 10 years in prison. Well, we're following stories from all across the Metro Detroit area this morning. Stories out of Gross Point Park this morning, as well as Detroit's West Side and in Dearborn Heights. Yes, and that's where surveillance video shows a local business being targeted by thieves. The two thieves teamed up to steal thousands, $7,000 worth of equipment from this glass business. And after using a tool to easily cut the heavy duty lock on the trailer, they started filling an SUV, that SUV, with anything they could get their hands on. Now, although the license plate on that SUV has been removed, the older model Suburban is visible along with the men's faces, so police hope that someone can ID these men. And police in Gross Point Park are looking to identify six young men wanted for vandalizing several cars. Police say that between 10 and 11 p.m. on Tuesday night, multiple cars were vandalized with spray paint, and they are asking neighbors in the area to review any surveillance cameras to see if the suspects are seen on those cameras to help them try and identify and track down who's behind this. On Detroit's west side now, the same man has broken into multiple stores, walking away with cash, as well as cigarettes and booze. Surveillance video from earlier this month shows the man breaking into a party store on Seven Mile for the second time, and then on Sunday, he broke into a store in Grand River using a ladder to drop into the store from the roof. A Monroe County assistant prosecutor is under investigation after allegedly leaving the scene of a motorcycle accident. According to officials, the attorney was riding a motorcycle on I-75 in LaSalle Township, where he apparently laid his bike down. When medical crews arrived, the man rode off. He was later spotted riding near Luna Pier, uh, Luna Pier Road and was pulled over. He was placed on administrative leave. It is 637 and new this morning in good health. What researchers are calling a vaccine to help people who are allergic to cats. We'll explain. And using art as therapy in this week's Your Neighborhood, a simple concept making a really big difference in the lives of deserving children and adults. We're back with that more in just a minute. Sky 4 Traffic is brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm. Call 1-800-CALL-SAM. I was transferring between locations on a bus. Someone ran a red light and hit us, and I was thrown from the bus. My sister called 1-800-CALL-SAM, and I'm glad she did. 
my case was settled for $1.4 million. I latch. I lock. I clean. I block. Where are you? I vaccinate. Don't Vaccine preventable diseases like measles, whooping cough, and more are still a risk because many children aren't vaccinated. Put a safety barrier between your child and life-threatening illness. Vaccinate. Get the facts at ivaccinate.org. Diamonds, the forever gift. The Jewelry Exchange has half-carat anniversary bands for $2.99, one-carat two-stone rings, $9.90, one-and-a-half-carat three-stone rings, $19.90, and one-carat studs, just $3.99. All guaranteed to appraise for double. The Jewelry Exchange, Livonia. Beat the clock at Art Van Furniture and Mattress. The clock is ticking. The earlier you shop, the more you save. Friday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Save up to 75% store-wide and take an extra 25% off the low lowest price. Finance it with 0% up to 50 months with our Art Vintage Reward Card. Plus, free TVs, free touchscreen laptops. Beat the clock and save Friday till 9. Open early 9 a.m. Saturday at Art Van Furniture and Mattress. Wow. Wow. Super fast internet and your favorite TV shows. A whole lot to look at for just $64.99 per month. Calling Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has earned the FCA Customer First Award for Excellence certified by J.D. Power. That's the Galling difference. Only at Galling Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, your Chrysler store. During the summer clearance event, take home the 2019 Dodge Journey GT with all-wheel drive or 169 employee, 209 friends and family. Or at least the 2019 Chrysler Pacifica Limited for 279 employee, 329 friends and family. Get to Galling Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram today. A semi-truck hit me. I had many broken bones that required surgery and therapy. The Sam Bernstein Law Firm was there through the whole process, and they really treated me like family. My $3 million verdict wouldn't have happened without them. Welcome back, everybody, here at 640 on your Friday morning. And this morning, a mother is behind bars, accused of driving under the influence with her young kids in the car. Police in St. Clair County received reports of an intoxicated woman with two children asking for directions at a gas station. She was later spotted by police and refused to pull over. After reaching speeds of 80 miles per hour, the chase was called off. The woman and two kids were later discovered on the side of the road after the car apparently lost control. Thankfully, everyone is expected to be okay. And busted by his own co-workers, a South Carolina deputy is facing charges after being arrested during an undercover operation set up by his own department. The officers posed as underage girls online during a sting to catch child predators. The deputy was fired immediately after arriving to the scheduled meetup location in his squad car. He's now facing attempted sexual conduct and a minor charges. It is 641 and your neighborhood this morning takes us to Birmingham for an organization created by friends and relatives of people with special needs. They provide therapeutic programs that help improve their clients overall quality of life. This special group of children and adults uses art as therapy. It's all part of the nonprofit FAR Therapeutic Arts and Recreation, or just FAR for short. FAR is an organization that's been serving the special needs community since 1951. So we have a deep history in the community. Um, we provide creative arts therapy for people with special needs of any age and any diagnosis. Pamela Ayer serves as president of the organization, and it certainly keeps her busy. Last year, FAR served over 1,400 people. They offer programs for people with special needs, like music, art, dance, and recreation therapy, along with yoga, ice hockey, bowling, social activities, and summer camps, just to name a few. For Pamela, there's one main reason they do what they do. The, the people who we serve. Um, this organization just makes a huge impact. FAR's neighborhood is really all of Metro Detroit. They have programs based in Macomb, Birmingham, and the DSO in Detroit, as well as providing creative arts therapy at 30 public schools. They have 23 therapists on staff, with music being the largest program. 
It's not just about learning percussion or learning how to play piano or learning a dance move. It's really about the social skills and the life skills that the kids are going to get out of it in the long run. FAR operates out of this church in Birmingham rent-free to be able to provide their services and keep the program costs low. And it's clear those attending enjoy themselves if their smiles are any indication. Parents always come in and say, um, our kids don't even realize they're having therapy. And they're, it, this is therapeutic, so there's a ton of benefits to it. So they, they come here and they're happy. We want them to be able to function in the community, have better lives at home, um, better lives at school. Very doing nice. Just that. It is so refreshing doing this segment because I get to go out and tell the stories of nonprofits that are helping people in our area, but also they're doing this for the love of. This is not a job. No, not know? at all. It is. Look at how they're impacting lives yeah. and families for generations. Been around since the 1950s. Absolutely. So it's a great organization. And if you'd like to get involved in that organization, we post a link to FAR on our website. You can go to clickondetroit.com. There you can also find information on how to donate and provide scholarships for their programs for people with special needs. Also, if there's a nonprofit out there in a specific neighborhood that you'd like me to check out and uh, share it with our Metro Detroit viewers. Uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. Well, get ready for a, the, a flood of emails yeah. because there's so many great organizations out there in the metro area. And I know Paul Gross knows all about that as well, being a great member of our community and giving back. Yeah, it's always important to give back. And if you have the opportunity, you know, I always say just leave the world a better place than you got it. And that's that's my mantra. All right, right now we have a very quiet start to the day. Temps are very comfortable, even upper 50s here in Adrian. Most of us are in the low to mid 60s. Visibility is fine here in southeast Michigan, but in the central part of the state, very dense fog. Be aware of that if you are heading westward this morning. All right. Almost all of us are dry this morning, and the reason I say almost is that you have a couple of very, very light showers here up in the thumb. Most of us are not getting rain, and most of you in the thumb are not getting rain. So let's talk about the bigger picture.